What's up, everybody? Thanks for uh, being a patron. Really appreciate it. Norby's an awesome dude that I'm sure you all know, and he has agreed to come on and do a short little interview for your viewing pleasure. So, Norby, first question. What is it like to be a coach? Or more specifically, tell me if you were going to be coaching a juggler for a half hour. Let's say they're, uh, they're an intermediate juggler working their way up to being a professional juggler. What would that practice look like from start to finish? Ooh. From start to finish. The thing is with professional formations like I do at the circus school is they're over three years. So, you know, the three years is the first year we try to give them the base, make sure they know technique, like classic technique, you know, the back crosses, pirouettes, all that. Make sure they know uh, numbers to an extent and then make sure they've done some research in manipulation, in movement. Make sure they've touched as many grounds as possible. Mm -hmm. Then the second year we try to sort of narrow them down to find what their path is. Mm-hmm. Like maybe they don't want to do balancing anything ever. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But at least they've learned it. At least it's in the pocket for the future. And we try and find their path and then help them down it. And then the third year, it's all about choosing your tricks that you're going to perform in your final piece. I'm working really hard on them and incorporating your concept and everything into it. Mm-hmm. So it's it's quite varied, but in one single practice, it's only an hour at a time uh, at the Quebec School. So normally we choose four four different things because I think I said in the main interview, fifteen minutes is a, it's about a maximum attention span for one trick. Mm-hmm. So we choose four moves and then depending on where it is in terms of evolution. If it's a brand new trick that they want to put in their act, but they don't have more experience with it, then we'll spend 10 minutes doing like all the building blocks for it. So let's say you want to do five ring pancakes. You can do four ring pancakes and you can do five rings, but you want to do five ring pancakes. So we'll do educated, uh, the, the building blocks for five objects. So three flashes and three snake and four crossing, but in pancakes. Mm-hmm. So get three flash pancake, four pancake crossing, and try to connect there more and more and more. And then five rings, throwing one pancake back to cascade, throwing two pancake back to cascade. And spend 10 minutes or so building up. And then the last five minutes is actually trying the trick. So we'll try, um, try to get a few flashes maybe, five throws. And then depending on where it is, either add a few more or just try and get it clean. It's a lot about judging each each day separately as well because you don't know if your student's going to be tired or if they're going to be like they've just come from acrobatics and their body hurts. Mm -hmm. There's so much to to think about. But, yeah, a new trick like that, building blocks, and then a little bit of extra to just try and drill it. Mm -hmm. A trick that's further along let's take five pancakes again let's say they've got it like it's now like they can flash it every time and now we're into okay let's put it in the act so we want to do repetition so we want to do a sort of pyramid repetition let's say they want to do 20 throws in the act so we're going to do 10 flashes and then we'll do seven times like 13 catches maybe five times 15 catches three successful 17 catches and one successful 20 catches. Mm -hmm. And we'll try and get that. And um, also got to finish on a high, as I mentioned before. If you notice that the 20 is not going to happen today, like it's just they've tried 10 times and it's going all over the place, Mm -hmm. come back and say like, all right, let's do 15, but super perfect 15 and stop on that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, once it's semi-solid, repetition up to where you want to be. And then when it's super solid, I'd say it's time to add in um, challenges to make it more stable. Mm-hmm. So if you've got your five pancakes, you're doing like 20 catches every time. Okay, it's ready for the act. But in your act, you've got stress and you've got fatigue and you've got lights in your eyes and all these things. Mm-hmm. So 
if the if the the trick you're getting is at that point, then we'll do it on handstand canes. Like you're standing up isolated, can't move your feet, mm-hmm. and we'll do some training on that. Or it could be to run a bunch of techniques in a row so that you like get tired. Let's do just like a bunch of side swaps and pirouettes, turning around a circle, turning around a circle, and then do pancakes. Mm-hmm. So you got that sort of like you're tired already. Mm-hmm. And another one which is quite hard to do, but it's always to try and not get too used to the background. A lot of people, a lot of jugglers, will find a wall that we like. Like we're in the racquetball court and we look at that wall because Mm -hmm. the line is straight. The other wall, the line's kind of an angle and that messes you up. The other wall, there's a little door at the top that annoys you. So you look at this one wall and you always juggle at that one wall. But every theater you're gonna play in, every cruise ship, every special event, the background is going to be totally different, so you've got to get used to that. Mm-hmm. So one other thing I try to get people to do once they're solid is they'll do one repetition facing their regular direction, and then they'll do it 45 degrees out every time. Mm. Before, I used to do 90 degrees, mm-hmm. but I realized it's still quite easy because you're either in line with the building that way mm-hmm. or you're in line with the building that way. But if you're in, like, you've got diagonal lines in your vision, then it can really mess you up. Yeah. But you need to because that, I mean, that's real life. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then one, that Aaron Sparks, one of my old juggling partners I spoke about before, he, in circus space, he said there's one, if it's the London Circus School, there's one big window across the top of the training space where a certain time of day the sun is just blinding and everyone looks away from it all the time. Mm. Whereas he would juggle directly into it. Interesting. And... It would suck, like he's just always just blinded every day, all day. But then when he went on stage and he had stage lights, mm-hmm. it was significantly less than the sun. So it was like never disturbed by stage lights. Right. So that's another one. If it's if the sun's coming through, like okay, look at the sun or like uh, so there's a grid we have at circus school with all the aerials on it and it's really weird to look at when you juggle because it totally messes up everything. Mm. So that's another thing, look at that and juggle mm-hmm. because Sometimes there's going to be things in your way and you're going to have to deal with it. Right. So yeah, 15 minute blocks to go back to the answer is four things. And then we judge a little bit on the fatigue of the student. If it's a hard day or it's a hard week or whatever, then the four things are going to be more like tricks you don't have solid yet or a little bit of research it might be just, I'll throw out a challenge like, okay, find me a sequence with three balls where you touch the floor at least one time, it includes at least one body throw, and uh, you use at least four meters of space. Mm-hmm. And then we'll just research on that. Or another constraint, like it could be a keyword or a shape or something. Then if they are doing good, like a middle ground of energy, then we'll do... Half the class will be that, and then half a class will be the technique that we talked about before. Mm-hmm. And then weeks where it's like, all right, full energy time, it's going to be four tricks that are either solid or semi-solid, and you're going to work 15 minutes hardcore on four different tricks and be tired by the end of it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's a bit of judging every every lesson's different, but mm-hmm. that's the general formula. Right, and I'm sure that it varies um... You know, infinity more. <laughs> just depends yeah. on, on the situation. Yeah, it is hard to teach. I, I when I went to Australia last year, I had to I had a talk with the coaches over there about how to coach juggling. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I had an hour and a half period to tell them everything I'd learned in fifteen years. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot of judging. A lot of okay, you want to learn that trick, so I'm going to come up instantly with blocks that you need to learn to get to that trick Mm -hmm. how many of each one you should do and how long you should spend on each one and is it progressing at the speed i think it should be and if not how can we change that Mm -hmm. if yes how can we also change that Mm -hmm. it's so much judgment and so much experience is needed to just be able to decide what they should do Mm -hmm. but that's the general yeah. <laughs> um, a, a follow-up question is, uh, what's a really common technique issue you see across jugglers? Posture. 
generally okay. posture. A lot, a lot, a lot of jugglers lean back. They're like, <laughs> let's see how this works. So they're juggling like this. Okay. Yep. And um, it's really common, I think, if you're self-taught especially, you throw these objects up in the air and then you look up and you kind of get almost scared of it. So you kind of step away from the juggling mm -hmm. and you juggle in front, in front of you a little bit. But the problem is the, the alignment of your body. You want to make sure that your weight is over the balls of your feet. You want to make sure that your knees are not locked out. You want to have a little bit of bounce in them. So just leave them slightly relaxed. And then you want to make sure your core's engaged, your shoulders are down and back, and not back like this, but back like mm -hmm. this, not like this. And good posture is going to make things easier in terms of endurance. Like the less muscles you have to use to juggle well, mm -hmm. the less tired you're going to get, obviously. If you look at people like Thomas Dietz, who did three hours of five balls, which is ridiculous. Oh, actually, no, wait, uh, Ofek did a longer time now. Mm -hmm. But there's so little movement. It's just like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Right, right. Whereas other jugglers, they're all like moving their hips a lot, moving their arms a lot, and they have to go over here to correct errors all the time. Mm -hmm. And this one, by holding yourself, like leaning back a bit, you're using way too much of your core to hold yourself in place mm -hmm. because you have to also stop falling over. Whereas if you stand up straight, then... I mean, it's much easier to balance, obviously, because you're above your center of gravity and not behind it. Mm -hmm. So posture is a huge thing. And in the same vein, elbows too high. Like, mm -hmm. you want your elbows down by your side. You don't want them coming in front of your body or behind your body. Your forearms, it's all about forearms. Yep. A lot of people juggle like this. Mm -hmm. And again, it's the same thing. You're going to be using your shoulders and your pecs and your trapeze a lot if you do this. But if you're just like, just forearm, then it's only your biceps who are working mm -hmm. mostly. I mean, there's other things involved as well. But so you're gonna get tired much slower because mm -hmm. you're using your whole body to throw a single ball in the air. So make sure you're you're have good posture, that you're yeah. relaxed, that your uh, and, arms are more like at a ninety degree angle than up at your yeah. face. Elbows in, elbows to the side. Also, I mean, this is a this is a thin line. Is the the uh, amount of effort you put into standing well? Because when I say to people, "Okay, keep your elbows in," they're all like, huh, "Okay, elbows are in. My elbows are totally stuck against my sides now." Yeah, okay, not not helping any more than before. Right. You want your elbows below your shoulders and in line with your whole body, but not like stuck in but just, just relaxed in the right place. It's such a weird thing to do, and posture isn't something you can just be like, oh, done. Mm -hmm. But me, I noticed, and my coach, Francis Julien, when I came to circus school, the first thing he did before he taught me about juggling, he was like, okay, you need to do this with your hips, this with your shoulder, this one's too high, this one's too far back, you're wiggling your butt too much when you juggle. And he corrected all these little things, and then we worked on the juggling. Mm -hmm. And every trick I could do before suddenly just became really easy. Hmm. Right, just because I wasn't using my whole body to throw a flash, I was using only what I needed to use. I think a lot of jugglers are scared of doing dance classes because they feel like dance is, you know, it's, it's this scary thing. <laughs> like, no, no, I'm a juggler, I'm not a dancer. True. But <laughs> da it's not about being able to do the am amazing things dancers do. It's about knowing where your body is in space, knowing like where your knees and your shoulders and your hips and everything needs to be for, to be comfortable and knowing which muscles to use and which muscles not to use to do the movement you want to do. Mm -hmm. It also helps pirouettes a lot as well, hmm. which we love. <laughs> yeah. Wow. A lot of great information. I feel like I could... <laughs> I can, juggle better already uh, yeah I, I can already juggle better and i also feel like i could just ask you a million questions and get a million great answers so appreciate that um so uh, last question and okay. you can take as long or as short of a time <laughs> as you want to answer it uh how has joe showers shaped turbo fest 
Joe Showers is our biggest fan. I think. <laughs> I know. Joe, I mean, we've had not many people have been to all 11 Turbo Fests, mm-hmm. a handful, but Joe is one of them. Mm-hmm. He was there the first one and every single one since. And he, we've never like asked him to or anything. We've never paid him to, especially. We've never been like, Joe, you know, make sure you talk about Turbo Fest wherever you go because he goes to, I don't know how many festivals a year, but it's a lot. And he has friends everywhere and he could be a really bad thing for a bad festival. <laughs> Luckily, we're a good festival, and it's a really good thing. He's everywhere he goes, or like Turbo Festival Fest, go to Turbo Fest, best festival ever. And even um, a few years back, a guy, uh, Simon Garin, he made a, a Turbo Fest promotional video, not for like a single festival, but for the company, Turbo 418. Mm. And he interviewed Joe Showers for the video. And Joe was just like, this is the best festival ever and he explained everything he loves about the festival and that became the like the spokesperson of turbo fest by accident <laughs> now, like, when we send out videos to get grants or funding for the festival this company gets to see joe showers picking up the festival for two minutes mm-hmm. <laughs> it's fantastic and he's always so involved he's run the renegade a bunch of times He's been in the show he, before, uh, before the last couple of years, and Mr. Pressburg came along and stole everything. <laughs> Joe Showers was winning every competition every year mm. <laughs> without a problem. Uh, last year with Brian Koenig, he did, well, this year that just happened, he did a really cool opening act for the Renegade. Mm. And he's just... It's like his own festival. He always wants it to be better. He always tells us, okay, you know, you could probably change this as well and change this and maybe put this at this time of day and make sure for next year that you think about this thing. It's like he's almost part of the committee. Uh, He's seen, he knows the North American scene. That's the thing as well. I know Europe and I kind of, what I brought to the Turbo Fest organization was my knowledge of the European scene and what they enjoyed. And I wanted to bring that to, to Canada because in North America it's a very different style of festival whereas Joe knows the North American scene I think probably better than any other juggler at the moment so he sees what works and what doesn't work at all these other festivals and then he compares that to Turbo Fest and you know, every year he'll be like yo Nopi you know this this event or this like thing at the festival could probably be changed for the better if you did this thing. And I'm like, okay, cool. Noted it down. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we'll try it out. And it's pretty much every time a success. So, and yeah, a huge thanks to Joe Showers for just his continued support for 11 years. Over a decade, he's been bigging us up. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. For, thanks, Joe. <laughs> I don't know if he's a Patreon, but thanks anyway, even if you're not. Yeah, um, well, he uh, he definitely yeah. pitched Turbo to me the first time we ever met. So okay, and and I was sold on. I haven't made it up yet, but I will one day <laughs> because of Joe. So it just shows what some positive energy does. Yeah, cool. that's it. Joe showers. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Norby. This was awesome. Thank you. And, yeah, no uh, worries. Thanks everybody else for being a patron, and look forward to more cool interviews like this coming soon. All right.